All right, you are now experts on molecular motion, right? Are the molecules of a solid like this desk in motion? Well, sure they are. How do we think the um, think of the molecules of a solid moving? Vibrating in place. That's right, vibrating in place. If the solid is hot, they vibrate quickly. If the solid is cold, they vibrate. The molecules vibrate more slowly. And so we can imagine as we cool a solid down, what are we doing to its molecules? We're making them go slower and slower and slower and slower. You suppose we could get that solid so cold, so very cold that at some point its molecules would boop, stop? Is there such a temperature at which molecular motion ceases? Well, I think so, and it has a name. What's the name of that temperature at which all molecular motion ceases? It's called absolute zero. And we can say a couple things about absolute zero. We just said one thing. There is no molecular motion. No molecular motion. And thus, there is no what kind of energy? If the molecules are not moving, there is no heat energy as well. Energy. Having trouble here. All right, so absolute zero. Well, how cold is absolute zero? The temperature at which there is no heat energy because uh, molecular motion has ceased. Well, let's check this out. Let's draw an imaginary thermometer and let's try it. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's see. How far down can I go? Oh, yeah, I can go about that far. All right, and I'm going to put some uh, very well-known points on this imaginary thermometer. Uh, let's put the, uh, the boiling point of H2O. Let's put the freezing point of H2O. And we're going to get down to absolute zero, wherever that is, but let's go ahead and put some actual temperatures in degrees Celsius. What is the boiling point of, of water? Degrees Celsius. Uh, yeah, it is 100 degrees Celsius. By the way, does water boil at the same temperature at sea level as on the mountaintop? Hmm, I don't know. What, uh, what, uh, when water boils, what's it working against? It's working against all the air molecules pushing down on it. So, as you go to higher altitudes, are there more or less air molecules pushing down on the on the water less and so they can escape and boil more easily so if you go up to uh, 14,000 feet and uh, you're cooking supper I'm sure you will notice that water if you boil some water it'll boil at a lower temperature than it would down if you're camped out on the beach but that's neither here nor there we'll just go with 100 degrees Celsius that's at sea level that's the sea level boiling point what's the freezing point of water in degrees Celsius yes zero zero degrees Celsius, 100 degrees. All right, well, of course, you know, we can get way below freezing point of water. Our freezers in our home are below the freezing point of water. Let's think of some cold stuff. Uh, how about uh, hmm, dry ice? That's pretty cold. What is dry ice? It's uh, frozen carbon dioxide. How come it's called dry ice? Well, it goes straight from a solid to a gas. Is that called evaporation? No, it's called sublimation. Anyway, dry ice, it's not very cold. It's down about minus 70 something. What have I got? Oh, about minus 80 or so. And uh, we get colder because that's what I have to put that about there. And uh, we can get down to something called liquid nitrogen. Now we're getting cold now. We're getting down close to minus 200. But we're still not down at absolute zero. Absolute zero. Absolute zero is way down about minus 273 degrees Celsius which in Fahrenheit is about minus 450, 460, somewhere in there. It's cold. It's real cold. Now you say, Professor, has anybody really gotten things down to absolute zero? Well, actually, that's a record that, uh, you know, different labs every now and then will set a new record. And I think the closest now is uh, like 13 trillionths of a degree or something with an absolute zero. Is that pretty close? That's pretty close. Now, absolute zero happens to be zero on another scale that goes up, 
And what's the name of that scale? The Kelvin scale. That's right. 0K. And the Kelvin folks don't like that little degree sign, so uh, uh, we call it 0K. And Kelvin degrees are exactly the same size as Celsius degrees. And so what's the freezing point of water in Kelvin degrees? Well, you had to go down 273 over here. 0 down to minus 273. 0. This goes up to 273. So, whoopsie, not a 3, but a 273. There we go, 273K. That is the, uh, that's the freezing point of water. And the boiling point of water would be another 100 degrees, right? 373K. All right, and so, um, and so there's some questions uh, in your study guide. Uh, one thing you'll uh, have to do on the uh, next test is do some conversion problems. So I've got a couple on there. Let's just do those real quick. Uh, in the, at number 13, I see is uh, in degrees Kelvin, what is minus 100 degrees Celsius and minus 200 degrees Celsius? Well, I might just draw one of these thermometers like this because uh, if we do minus 100 degrees Celsius and minus 200 degrees Celsius, what, uh, what are those over here? Well, we're coming down 100 degrees over here. Okay, 0 to minus 100. We're coming down 100 over here. So 273, what's 100 below that? I guess that would be about 173K, is that right? We're coming down 100 over here. We're coming down 100 over here. This comes down another 100. What's down another 100 over here? Okay, 173 minus 100, that would be 73K. And so you can see they go up and down together. You just got to keep your minuses straight and all that kind of thing. You might also have to go the other way. So I've got a couple problems down there. One of them is 250K. That would be about right here, 250K. The question is, what is that in degrees Celsius? Well, I might set up this little thermometer. I'm sure I would. And find the difference between 273 and 250. What is that? Oh, I think that's about 23, is it not? It is 23. And so uh, we're coming down 23 over here. We're coming down 23 over here. And what's 23 below zero? It's minus 23 degrees Celsius. Okay, what's the last one? 400K, the last one, that'd be up here. And so what I would probably do is I would probably find the difference uh, between those two right there. And uh, what is the difference? 373 to 400? What is that? I believe that's about 27 degrees, is it not? And so we're going up, up 27 degrees from 373 up to 400. So what's 27 degrees up over here? It would be 100 plus 27, 127 degrees, 107 degrees Celsius. So that's how, uh, that's how you might do those problems. Ooh, I ran out of a little space there, didn't I? Okay, let's move that just a little bit. See how that worked there? 373 to 400, that's 27 degrees. 27 degrees up here, 100 to 127. All right. Hmm. So then we have a question down here, number 15. It says, does an object at 5K have heat energy? Well, I could have asked the same thing about you know, 10K, 20K. What's the point the professor's making here? Anything above what has heat energy? Anything above absolute zero has heat energy, right? And then it's the follow-up question, are the molecules of this object in motion? If something is here at 5K, would its molecules be in motion? Yes. Anything above what has molecules in motion? Anything above 0K has molecules in motion. And so, uh, and so there you have it. Are the molecules in this room in motion? You better believe it. Absolutely. Where are we in this room? Let me get a different color here. Uh, we're at room temperature. We're at room temperature, which is uh, uh, commonly, uh, what's commonly called room temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. What is that in, uh, what is that in Kelvin degrees? Well, it'd be up 20 degrees. We're up 20 degrees over here. So it'll be 293K is room temperature. So all the molecules in here are just bouncing like crazy. They're just doing it, bouncing around and so forth. 
And uh, what about our bodies? Are we at room temperature? I hope not. That's a very bad sign. And so uh, we're uh, our temperature is uh, in Celsius is 37. That's another uh, that's another 17 degrees up. Another 17. And so uh, uh, our body temperature will be about 310K. And so if you uh, took your temperature and you had a Kelvin thermometer, it uh, normally would be about 310K. All right. That's how uh, that's the relationship between Celsius. The bottom line: anything above absolute zero has what? Heat energy. Anything above absolute zero has the molecules moving. The farther above absolute zero, the more heat energy, the more molecular motion, and there you have it. All right. Thank you. That's it for this one.